Our focus is working with people at the early stages of their journey, uh, needing that help to build resilience and building strategies to work in their communities, but also people who are really at the, um, the other end of their journey to help them uh, recover and keep well and really to live their best lives, something that we're really passionate about. And we know that resilience has never been more tested um, than in the last 14 months. And we can't overestimate the impact that this has had on our mental health. So in Bath Mind alone, we've seen a significant increase in people who, experience, who are experiencing isolation, who are extremely anxious, and people who are really experiencing those low moods. People who haven't been known to our services before, so they're very new to us. And in the last 12 months alone, we've had over a thousand additional calls to our service. Um, I can't see my slides, so apologies, but I just wanted to give um, an overview of uh, the national picture uh, and the statistics we know can be overused in the media and it's not always um, helpful with our context. But I think they do give a snapshot of our current mental health crisis. Um, and I've given three um, as an indication of the continuing challenges um, that we have um, uh, currently as a nation and how we can manage our mental health long term. So the first one is that we've got um, uh, one in six of us are experiencing a mental health challenge. That's anxiety and depression in a given week. Now, many of us know about the one in four statistic, but I thought one in six in a given week is, is really shocking. I wanted to highlight that. Secondly, suicide remains the number one killer in men under 45. And we know that we've not managed to resolve this challenge. It's been um, quite an issue for some time. And 79% of informal carers um, have their own mental health challenge, challenges. And that's anxiety, depression and suicidal thoughts. And I think that just highlights the impact that uh, mental health is having on the wider family and on the wider community as well. So the local context for our community um, will really be mirrored across the country. But these have really been the experiences, I think, for us local organisations delivering services and providing interventions. And as we learn to live with COVID and come out of lockdown, I think we really need to consider that long term impact that this year has had on individuals and their families. And we know the media is really good at highlighting that loneliness and isolation is a worrying concern and that long term impact it's having on our mental health. But there are those additional challenges as well, aren't they, that we know. Um, we've got the delayed issue around physical ill health diagnosis and procedures and what that impacts on people. We've got job losses, increasing debt. The long term impacts are for our young people's lives. And that's such as uh, education issues, skill development problems, social isolation increases and that lack of connectivity and interaction and that mental health crisis that we're currently experiencing could well become our next pandemic. And I think we need to act as a society to really um, uh, rebalance that and, and look at that. So I think there's a bit of a call to action there. I think we need a holistic response to develop those robust coping mechanisms, both as a community, as a society, but also individually. And I think what we know about resilience is that it's how it impacts on us personally, and, and how we respond to those shared experiences. It can be very, very different for each of us. We do impact that or we do experience that impact differently. And I think we therefore need as a community to really respond to help people navigate those challenges and to ensure that we are as a community more agile and more responsive. So we need to look out for each other a bit more. We need to reconnect and we need to give ourselves that permission to ask, are you OK? And I think support needs to be holistic. So it's both that physical and that mental response, mental health response. It's flexible, it's adjustable over time, and it's also very person-centered as well. That's really critical. And we need to um, really re-establish our core focus of what we call the three fundamental pillars, and that's of a safe and stable place to reside. That's structured occupational tasks in its widest sense, and I don't just mean um, paid occupation, paid work and meaningful connectivity with others, with those that we love and to be loved as well. I think we need to redress the balance that we've had this year of a very contactless society, a society that going forward, we need to um, really 
find a, a way of reconnecting. But I do think that we could harness some of the positives that we've had of last year around that virtual space that we've been living in. And we know that we need to establish a more blended approach of working and living and connecting. But we must never see that as replacing those mean, meaningful physical connections and interactions. But for many of us who are unable to have those face to face interactions, the virtual space, whether it's phone contact or other virtual media, is a real a positive alternative. And it does give us all that greater reach. So we need to rediscover, I think, what I'm calling that collective joy. So our personal um, resilience and how we can work on, on um, empowering ourselves and giving, our, giving power back to ourselves. And I think we need to aim for, um, uh, for us to live uh, through the five ways to well-being. And those have been established and produced by the New Economics Foundation. They've been around quite a while. Um, if you Google it, it's, it gives you some really good tips. Um, we can, uh, the, the five ways are to connect, to be active, to take notice, to keep learning and to give. And some practical steps we can take that support that. Well, we know about eating and sleeping well, that's being well, um, well versed. Framing our days, so avoiding being in one place for too long. Taking some exercise each day, and I don't mean running a marathon, I mean moving around, going for a good walk structuring our days and building some quality you time and some quiet time, developing our relaxation techniques and mindfulness and meditation maybe, and take time in our day to do something that we actually enjoy doing. And we must reduce information overload. This is a bit of a passion of mine uh, with two sons who are always on social media. Uh, we do need to make an effort to switch off from our screens and also um, avoid too much of the news overload. And it is pretty repetitive, isn't it? Um, so that's that social media issue is a double-edged sword, as we know. And of course, really, really importantly, is make those connections with people. So to reconnect, uh, make a phone call, chat to your neighbor, chat to your friends, um, your peers, your family, really, really develop those interactions and those conversations again. On Monday, it's Mental Health Awareness Week. Some of you may know, and this is theme and focus is nature and the environment. So where possible, we do need to reconnect with the outside world. Even 15 minutes a day will make a huge difference to how we're feeling. And it's like a reset button. And there's a huge correlation as well with the suicide rates in men and that general reluctance to open up and share experiences. Unfortunately, stigma and shame remains our biggest challenge. And so we need to um, rethink this and remind ourselves that feeling ashamed is uh, it, it needs to go. We mustn't feel ashamed and we need to talk to somebody. And that is our vital first step. So I'd finally uh, like to say that to um, to find that power again, to empower ourselves, we need support to do that. We need to develop trust and understanding amongst our peers. We need to connect, but we need to connect in a safe space in a safe time to do that and with people that we trust we need to start these conversations again we need to reach out give ourselves permission just to stop and think and just review where we are and what we're doing and be kind to ourselves it is okay not to be okay thank you